But right now, we're delighted to have Stephen Kenny in studio with us. First of all, Stephen, we'll be talking about your season with Dundalk, and it's been going ex extremely well. But an awful lot of people will have monitored your season with Shamrock Rovers, and plenty of people had lots to say about it and why it didn't quite work out for you there. But you're with us here tonight. So, so in your view, I mean, what happened with Shamrock Rovers and your season there? Well, <coughs> well, I. You know, I'm very disappointed. I was very disappointed with the decision. I didn't agree with it at all. You know, six six months is, is no time. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. I only lost four games, four league games in the season there. And uh, when it, you know, when the decision was made, we'd actually won seven and drawn two of the of the previous nine games. So I think uh, they subsequently, when they appointed Brian Laws, lost four out of the next six, went out of the FAI Cup, lost the League Cup final, and went out of Europe. So. I, d I didn't agree with the decision, but I have to live with that. That's something, you know, it is a, no matter what way, what I say, it's a black mark of my career and I have to live, a, I have to live with that, you know. Yeah. How big a factor was it, Stephen, that you went into a club where the squad was established, they had won back-to-back -back championships, and was it a little bit more difficult to make your impression on the squad and change things the way you wanted to change things? No, I mean, I think, uh, um, you know, some, some of the signings I made, you know, didn't didn't uh, enhance the, the the squad the way the way I would have wanted them to you know but uh, you know I, I had no problem with the squad at all they were a good group to work with and um, been given more time you know I, I would have talked we, we were never going to catch Sligo because they had such a season last season yeah, yeah. they only lost one game they won the league only losing one game uh, but I think we were in both in the quarter final of the cup and in the league cup final we, we had a chance to, to to win two trophies when that decision was made. So, but there's nothing I can do about that now. That's in the past and uh, yeah. we, every, everyone has to move on. Yeah, well, uh, we all knew that you wouldn't be out of football for too long, you know, and when the Dundalk opportunity came along, uh, did you have any reservations about taking it? Because, I mean, it seemed like a very big challenge. Yeah, I, you know, the first thing was that I wasn't sure about taking over three clubs in, in three years. Yeah. I was, I was unsure about that. But ultimately... <laughs> I was going to, ha you know, if I was going to, if I was going to manage again, that was, that was something I was going to have to do regardless. And I thought Dundalk might be too difficult a job to turn around because, um, you know, they had uh, they struggled last season. But mm. the owners of the club, um, Andy Connolly and Paul Brown and the, and the chairman Kieran Bond, they were terrific. They they came uh, to Donegal where I live, and you know they they said that well, they didn't have to tell me about the traditions of Dundalk I knew Dundalk was a great club with great traditions they haven't won a trophy in, in, a, in a decade but it, you know in the you know particularly in in Liam's year when Liam was playing with Der when Derry Dundalk were one of their main rivals yeah. at that period did it, with Jim McLaughlin and Torlock O'Connor and, and uh, that era they were they were, you know they had some great sides and certainly uh, you know we, we I just had to try and rebuild a club and and, and try and progress. In many ways, was it the ideal job because you basically went in there with a clean slate? I mean, you, you had to rebuild an entire squad almost. Wasn't that the situation? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't the ideal job. You know, it was bloody. <laughs> you know, I, I was I was fearful that it would be too difficult because yeah. uh, geographically, it's not like Sligo, Cork, or Derry where you have you have players who all live in the region, and Sligo have a lot of, a lot of houses that they can relocate people. And all of that with, with Dundalk, we've got to get players. We have some players in Dundalk, but we've got to get players travelling. Uh, and we, I've asked an awful lot of the players in terms of their commitment, and it's, their commitment has been absolutely fantastic. Because mm. we've asked a lot in terms of their, you know, how often they train, and the commitment has been, uh, you know, second to none really. And the players are getting the rewards. In you know? many ways, Stephen, uh, is it a case that there's not a huge pressure on you as manager this, this season, or indeed? on Dundalk as a football club because of where they came from last season and how poor things were going for them but will that pressure begin to build because you're right in the title race now you're only six points off the leaders yeah we're in a great position and I think the thing that's been really pleasing has been the, the rate of improvement of the players like I we were 10 points behind we were 12 points behind Sligo and now we're, we're down to two points so a lot of you can see the players progressing every week getting better um, and the squad you know has shown a lot of character when we went to the the Brandywell the weekend are two most two experienced players, Stephen O'Donnell and Mark Ross, that were missing. Keith Ward done his crew shit. He's, yeah, he's been yeah. our playmaker. Yeah. John Mountney, he's been important. He was out and we lost Chris Shields in the game. So we still managed to get a result. So that speaks volumes for the, for the players themselves. Um, so we're going to have to continue in that vein uh, over the next few weeks. Yeah, Pat, uh, I mean, we've all been impressed by Dundalk this season and the way it has gone for them. But uh, pleasantly surprised as well, I think, many of the pundits on the programme that they are in contention. Yeah, well, I've got one comment and one question. The comment is that this guy should carry a wand. He's a magician, and the job he's done is phenomenal. But the question, Stephen, how good is it for you to look at that league table 
and to see yourself five points clear of Shamrock Rovers. To be honest, like I know people would think that, but you know, I'm I'm not interested in scoring points. I'm interested in trying to in trying to achieve success with Dundalk, and certainly um, we're in a strong position at the moment. You you asked me, uh, you know, we're only six points, we're in the mix and so forth. But I I think the way the players should be looking at it is that they've gone to the top three away from home, they've gone to Sligo away from home, St Pat's away from home, and they've gone to Derry away from home and won. Yeah. And won in their backyard. And they've beaten the league leaders twice, St Pat's twice. So they shouldn't be, and the, the rate of improvement, they should be thinking now they, they can go on and really challenge for this league. That's why the players should be thinking now. Mm. Now, it's never happened in the history of the league. The league, you know, it's never happened that a team has come from bottom of the league one year to go and win it the next. So um, history suggests it won't happen or it can't happen, but I don't agree with that. I think the players should now believe that they can, they can go on a run of winning matches and, and, and see where it takes them, because it's such a competitive league this year. That's I think everyone's yeah. going to be everybody. Yeah. Yeah. If we can keep in contention with three or four games to go, I'm sure the top five all feel they can do that. You know, and, and we, we feel no different. OK, Stephen, well, you're very much in the mix and uh, we're enjoying the football that Dundalk are playing and continued success to you and the club for the rest of the season. Really appreciate you coming in to join us tonight. Thank you.